cinema organs. Uh, it's something that people uh, look at you a bit strange when you talk about organs in a cinema, but there was a time in the, in the heyday of the British cinema back in the 30s that every decent cinema had an organ. And uh, it was a real organ, not an electronic, as a lot of people felt. Uh, it had roomfuls of pipes and percussions and other musical instruments, all of which were real, and all of which were played by one person sitting at a, a set of keyboards, a console, as it's called, with several keyboards that usually came up and down on a lift uh, from the front of the stage or from the orchestra pit. Now, these instruments were used to play show tunes, the music of the day, popular songs, big band numbers, what you might call theatrical music. And, well, there were hundreds of these all over Britain and indeed many other countries, particularly the USA. I think people will remember the name, the mighty Wurlitzer. That was the best known make of cinema organ or theater organ, as they're often called. That was an American brand and became very well known. But in Britain, we had a number of manufacturers of theater organs as well. Uh, perhaps the best known was Compton, who produced more organs for cinemas in Britain than any other single manufacturer. But uh, another well-known company produced a theatre organ that was given the name Christie. In fact, that was the theatre organ branch of a firm of church organ builders called Hill, Norman and Beard. But the name Christie was used for their theatre organs. Maybe it sounded a bit more romantic. I don't know. The thing about the cinema organ is that almost no music was written specifically for it. The music that we play on these instruments, we, ha we have to arrange orchestral music or piano music and much of that arranging is done on the hoof. So um, you have the arrangements in your head or you make them up as you go along, uh, but you don't have them written down. So it's very improvisatory and it's also very personal for that, for that reason. The way that individual people approach playing the instrument is very different. And this, this instrument here I've heard played by you know, several different players and in different hands it sounds completely different. To me that's one of the interesting things about it. In the end months of the year 2002, the number of original installations in working cinemas in Britain had gone down to three. There's the one in the old Granada Walthamstow, the EMD cinema. Uh, the other two are in the Odeon Leicester Square, that's still going strong, and in the Odeon Western Supermare. And of course, the Christie, as it was in the Granada Walthamstow, uh, continued to play until the theatre closed in January 2003. And it was probably, in many people's estimation, the best one they ever made. And we've been very lucky to have the use of this instrument and to be able to hear it. Uh, longer than almost any other theatre organ in Britain. That particular instrument is unique in another way, and that is that it has got two consoles, two sets of keyboards. One of them was installed on a lift, and it would come up and down in the orchestra pit in uh, the same traditional way as most did. And also on the stage was another one on a trolley. This particular console could be wheeled out, and therefore when you had a big show with a number of uh, performers, musicians, you could actually make it look as though you had two different organs. Uh, there weren't really two organs. The sets of pipes upstairs in the rooms above the stage where the sound came from were the same. It was just that there were two different key desks, two different consoles controlling these pipes and the other instruments. But it, it looked good. Back in the 1950s, the pit console, that's the one that was on the lift in the orchestra pit, was boarded over they were going to have a big band concert and they needed the stage extension. I think that the orchestra pit's been flooded on more than one occasion, so uh, it's been damaged. And uh, over the years, bits from that console have been used to keep this one going. So although it's not completely beyond repair, I think it would be a, a lot of work. Because of this additional console on the side of the stage, which can be wheeled out, it's been possible to have organ concerts and other events continuously almost since those times. The organ actually did fall into disuse about 1970, but um, a group of people who are involved and have been for many years in the Theatre Organ Club and the Cinema Organ Society in Britain managed to get the organ playing again and 
it has been used two, three, four times a year ever since for Sunday afternoon concerts. And that's really the story of the organ in the EMD cinema, the Granada as was in Walthamstow. It has entertained people for many, many years and one day maybe it will be able to do the same again.